Hello, my name is Seri Tam. I'm from Roads and Road Facility Management, in short RRFM, under Traffic and Road Operations Group. The agenda for this session are Types of Roads and Road Related Facilities Managed by LTA on Public Street LTA Technical Requirements What are the common defects or issues encountered during handing over inspection And lastly, Summary We maintain the following items but not limited to flexible, rigid and semi-rigid pavement on the public street Road markings, road curbs, vehicle impact guardrail VIG, crash cushion and aluminium railing. We also maintain directional signs, street name signs, traffic signs, concrete bollard, safety bollard, convex mirror and spring-loaded poles as well. This slide tables the technical requirements pertaining to the design and construction of street works, where agencies and private developers must follow accordingly. They are available on our website. In brief, on architectural and civil aspects, the first three technical requirements provide the guide for design, layout and construction of land transport facilities. It also discusses on the quality of materials and workmanship required by LTA, and the requirements for design and detailing of all civil works for construction of roads. The first code of practice introduces the technical requirements, engineering design and construction of proposed street works in relation to development works, while the second code of practice set out the procedures and requirements for carrying out works on public streets. The material and workmanship specification sets out the standard for quality of material and workmanship for civil and structural works, and the standard detail of road elements sets out the standard and guidelines for common road elements such as pavement, road markings, curbs, railing, etc. The common defects or issues encountered during handing over inspection are listed and grouped as shown. Overall, LTA is concerned with critical safety defects where it can lead to fatal or serious injury or even severe damage. Now, that being said, it is the QP's responsibility to ensure that all defects or issues arising during maintenance period MEP, are rectified in accordance with the LTA technical requirement and approved traffic plans before handing over to LTA. Here are some examples of common defects or issues found during the handing over inspections. The flexible pavement road surface is uneven, collects water when rain, and this will develop to pothole. For rigid pavement, it was observed that the heavy-duty sealant between the concrete panels were always missing. The edges of the concrete panels were cheap or damaged. For semi-rigid pavement, the asbestos rubbed was not removed properly, resulting in a poor finish. On road markings, the common defects are it is no longer visible clearly or not removed properly resulting in ghost line or is missing after patch road pavement surface. Now there are instances where the pedestrian crossing are not set back by one meter as stated in the SDRE. The defects for road curbs are cracks at the center median and uneven curb haunching are observed. The traffic signs are dented or damaged or installed at the wrong facing of the approved traffic plan. Now, this error may confuse road users. For vehicle impact guard rail, it is common to observe that the slot box are different from those specified in the SDRE. Loose box, missing bolts and nuts. Another thing to highlight, the lapping must be done correctly. For railing, once damaged, it must be rectified before handing over. Also, we want to highlight that the railing must have an identification plate installed on the railing. You can refer to more details in the standard details of road elements. With this, 
I've come to the end of my sharing session. Hope the sharing today will be beneficial in your preparation for submission for future LTA works. Thank you for your time. Hi everyone, I am Dawn from Bridges and Tunnels Management Division, part of Traffic and Roads Operations Group. I'll be covering the topic on taking over matters for road structure, which involves but not limited to flyovers, viaducts, cross covers which are 2 meters or wider, and retaining walls. This is the agenda for today's presentation. I'll be going through the workflow for taking over of new road structure, followed by a sharing on the taking over checklist and documents required. Lastly, our necessary preparations to facilitate the taking over inspection and to highlight some of the common observations. This is the overview of the workflow for the taking over of new road structure. It shows the different stages of taking over process and the documents required at each stage. For example, at the initial stage, location plan and overview photos of the structure should be provided by the developers or other agencies. As built drawings should be provided prior to the joint site inspection. After the joint site inspection, defect list with photos should be submitted to the authority for comments. Next, after completion of repair, Consultant is to submit to authority the completion photos. Lastly, at the final stage, all required documents listed in the FN 11 to 15 form should be submitted. For today's presentation, we will be focusing on the FN 11 form, which is the taking over checklist for bridges. FN 11 shown here is a checklist with which consultants can refer to when handing over bridges to the authority, which includes fly flyovers, viaducts, vehicular bridges and also cross covers which are 2 meters or wider. Consultants should refer to the checklist closely throughout the handing over process. Next, I will move on to highlight some of the items specified in the checklist that is to be submitted. Complete set of structural drawings is to be submitted. It should include structural details, S-built piling details, bearing details, architectural shop drawings, road elevation and sectional drawings, and also drainage details. Please ensure that the drawings submitted are endorsed by the PE. We also require complete set of topo survey indicating the safeguarded road reserve line and also to indicate the structure to be handed to the authority. Please ensure that the drawing submitted is endorsed by the registered surveyor. For handing over of bridges, consultant is also to submit the FN20 form, which is the design summary sheet. The summary shall include the design criteria adopted for the design of the structure. For road cover, submission of fact sheet indicating the general information such as dimension of covers, access point to enter the covers, and also photos of the general view of the covers are required. Would like to also highlight that LTA only take over cross covers which are 2 meters wide or wider within the road reserve. Next, all necessary catalogs and warranty certificates are also to be submitted. This includes for items such as protective coating, bearings, movement joints, railings, waterproofing system, and also sign reflecting sheets. The last document to highlight in the submission of taking over is the taking over letters from other agency. For example, taking over letter from M Parks for maintenance of greenery, taking over of drainage works from PUB, and taking over letter from NEADBC for cleanliness. Next, I will touch on the joint site inspection for taking over. Please note that as built drawings are to be submitted when initiating the joint site inspection. Consultant is to bring along the drawings for the inspection. For inspection of box covers, contractor is to mechanically ventilate the cover for at least 30 minutes prior to the inspection. 
sufficient lighting should be provided and debris should be cleared beforehand for ease of inspection. Please also provide necessary tools such as tapping rod and measuring tape for the inspection. There should also be provision of safe access to the structure and if required, provision of inspection by boat for those across water bodies should be arranged. After the joint site inspection, the defect list indicating all defects picked up and highlighted during the inspection are to be submitted. Lastly, I will be sharing on some observations during the taking over inspection. We noted during our inspection, services were not diverted or instances where services were diverted but the openings were not backfilled with proper methods. Poorly finished concrete surfaces are also one of the common observations. Other observations include debris not cleared and water seepage on concrete surface. Some photos of good observations during our inspection where there are no surfaces punching through, concrete surfaces is well finished with no defects and the structure is also clean and clear of debris. I would like to take this opportunity to further highlight the following. Firstly, the proper installation of movement joint can help with good rideability while a poorly installed one has poor rideability and can generate noise. Next, a properly constructed parapet wall helps with the overall aesthetics of the bridge as it is the main visual element that will grab the attention of road users. It will also differentiate between the contractors that puts in effort to ensure this is well done. Lastly, for P12 railing, the benching at the post can be an eyesore if not done properly and typically that this is one of the sources which unsightly stain marks on parapets seems to be generated. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. I hope that this sharing has provided a comprehensive overview for your road structure handing over. Thank you.